What's up guys, Sparky Easy here. And today in this video, I'm gonna be going over the Vito Pro Pack Tech XL. And I'll be going over the Vito Pro Pack Tech MCT Blackout Buildout Edition. I'll explain to you what exactly that means here in a bit. But first I wanna go over this bag. So this bag I've had for a couple years and this is my second one because when I was about three or four years into the trade, I had all my tools stolen. I added up the total cost of all my power tools, hand tools, and it cost probably over $5,000 worth of stuff. And it was really hard on me at the time because I worked so hard getting all these tools, but eventually I was able to slowly buy everything back. So there's a couple things that I wanna mention about these type of tools is if you're just starting off in the trade, you don't have to jump into like a big bag like this. You can get something smaller or even a different brand, but I like showcasing tools that I use on a day-to-day -day basis and that I've tested and they've held up for me in this trade. So you can get pretty much any bag, but I'm gonna go over specifically, of course, the Tech XO bag. Now on this bag, there's two big pockets and this is designed to hold a lot of tools. This one is not, so for me, I specialize in service work, troubleshooting, so I need a lot of tools on hand. At least I feel like I need a lot of tools. But if you do residential, commercial, or even industrial new construction, you might not need a lot of hand tools when working on the job. So maybe something like this is a little bit better. But for me, I do like the big XL because it keeps a lot of my hand tools in one spot. So if you notice on here, I wrote, please return, don't steal from me and my family. Of course, when I, after I got my first bag stolen, once I got this, I wrote in a Sharpie, of course, you know, if someone's gonna steal it, they're gonna steal it, but I wrote that just to make them feel bad. I also put, um, this tool bag has a tracker and return or go to jail. Of course I was lying, but you never know. Someone might think twice before they steal your bag. But at the time that I had this bag, those Apple Air tags were not a thing, but nowadays in one of these slots, you could literally put an Apple Air tag, and if your bag ever gets stolen on a job site, you can track it. That's actually a good idea. So look, pro tip for you. Another thing is, some of you may or may not know, but I just recently became a master electrician. So I have 10 years worth of experience in the trade. So if you have a small amount of tools, do not compare yourself to me or to other people. You're just starting off. You don't have, especially all the money in the world to buy these tools. I don't have all the money in the world, but what you do is as you get paid a paycheck, you buy one or two tools, maybe for Christmas, you ask for a certain bag. And eventually after four years of being an apprentice, by the time you are eligible for your journeyman, you become a journeyman, you'll have a lot of the tools that you need to perform very well at work and do jobs to the best of your ability. So that's the goal is to eventually have these type of bags, these type of setups, but it doesn't have to be this bag. But um, so on the sides, Vito has a tape measure holder. They have different various loops. I use this to hold all my bits. This is for cutting PVC. This is for sockets and different hex screw heads. Um, I do like how it has a lot of zippers and it does have a strap that you can actually mount right here so that if you're gonna be traveling a long distance, you can put this bag over your shoulder so you don't have to carry it always with the handle. Now this thing can get very heavy once it's all filled up, but to me, it's worth throwing it over my shoulder and taking everything with me. So the way I have it set up on one side, I have all my hand tools. And on the other side, I have all my specialty tools. So if you open up this side, this is all my hand tools that I keep with me at all times. Now I do have more tools that I have in my pack out. And I'm not sure if I mentioned this at the beginning of the video, but this video is a part two to my previous Milwaukee pack out video. My Milwaukee pack out video, I have majority of my tools but then obviously my Vito Pro Pack is where I keep all my hand tools. So if you haven't seen that video yet, I'll put a link up here to the right if you wanna see that video, uh, but this is just a part two. So I'm gonna start taking all these out. So these are just various screwdrivers that I keep with me at all times. I have these two insulated Klein screwdrivers. I have two Phillips screwdrivers. Not sure why I have more than one, but I have them in here. These are some specialty head type of screwdrivers. Uh, I tend to see these a lot on Square D specifically. I have some smaller cabinet screwdrivers. This one's good when you're doing like receptacles and switch plates. Whenever you're doing a bunch of them, you can quickly install those. 
I have different type of channel locks with me. These are the channel lock 440s. These are good from half inch to two inch conduit, which I realize that that's the most common sizes that I tend to use on a day-to-day -day basis. I also have some Knipex versions and these ones, uh, these blue ones are made by channel lock. These are by Knipex, but the difference is these actually lock. So when you're dealing with a certain size, you can push the button and it will lock in place. And that's a definitely a good feature. So if you don't have a pair of channel locks yet, maybe it'd be a good idea to get the Knipex ones just because they lock. I have various lineman pliers. If you've been in the field for a while, we use these as hammers, you know, you always banging on these. When you're banging on them, don't bang on the swivel part. Always bang on this flat part because you don't want it to lose its ability to open and close. But these are by Knipex. These are Kleins and these are also Kleins. The difference with these is these are called hybrid pliers. This is just a preference. Let's say you're doing joints and you're trying to twist the wires together. These have strippers built in so you can do it all with one tool. These red handles, I have one that's cable cutters and these are for crimps when you're crimping down like forks or terminals. This is a good tip. So when you're on a big job site and you have a lot of electricians or tradesmen working together, sometimes you guys have the same tools. So one thing that's a common thing in the trade is to put colored tape to distinguish whose tools are what. So I've never seen anyone use glow in the dark tape, which is why I've used it. And if I ever leave it in like a dark spot, I can always see that it's there, it's laying there and I can easily tell that it's mine. The only bad thing about the glow in the dark one, it doesn't stick too well for a long time. So it's common in the trade to use like blue, black, red, green, purple tape to distinguish whose tools are what, especially on a, of course, a big job site. Here I have all my nut drivers. The most common ones that I use, that I keep, are quarter inch, 5 sixteenths, 3 eighths, 7 sixteenths, half inch, and 9 sixteenths. These are all good to have. Now, if you don't want to keep all these nut drivers, you can get something like this, which this is a newer tool. This They didn't have this when I first started in the trade. This is a newer Klein tool. But what's cool about it is you can unclip it, put it on your impact, and use these for hex nuts and to take off panels and it has all the sizes so they're all color coordinated 5 16 quarter inch oops if you want a, a different size you just flop them back and forth if you need a half inch you pull it off on this side and you can swap them so if you don't want to keep all those nut drivers you can definitely use something more like this i have a beater flathead these are used to like tighten lock nuts and just to bang on them i've already kind of destroyed them but these are known to be beaters I've used various type of strippers and these are my favorite ones. They just feel really good in my hand. I don't know, these are just, they feel the best in my hand. I don't know what else to say, but they feel the best in my hand to use them. So these are for slightly bigger size wire gauges. These are for more control sizes. So this goes as small as 26 gauge and it goes up to 16 gauge, which is very small wire. So if you're dealing with small control wires, definitely you need a set of these red ones. These yellow ones over here are good from 18 gauge to 10 gauge. So if you're doing residential, commercial, these are the ones you're gonna be using most often. These are needle nose pliers, use these all the time, as well as side cutters. We also call them dykes in the trade. Here's another beater screwdriver. Of course it has wear and tear. Um, this is actually should be on this side. So I'll put that off to the side. These are bolt cutters. Um, so if you really need like high leverage, um, something that is meant to cut like really strong bolts. It's also good to have these Knipex ones. And I'm gonna also have all this stuff linked in the description, just so you can easily find the items that you're looking for. I'm all about, you know, helping guys in the trade. If you guys are looking for a specific tool or if you're looking for a recommendation, please leave it down in the comments. And when I have time, I'll get back to you. I really do like helping you guys, especially the apprentices. Sometimes you don't always have a good mentor and I'm here to help out. I don't know where the black piece is for this tool, but this is a tool by Gennard Tools. And this is cool if you're doing service work and you're trying to knock out a half inch hole. Let's say you have a panel that has pre half inch knockouts or three quarter inch knockouts. There's a little black adapter that you stick on the panel and you can use this to punch out the holes, especially when it's in a difficult spot or if the panel is 
uh, flush mounted where you can't really access it. This is a great tool. Of course, I have my 25 foot Milwaukee magnetic measuring tape. Moving on to the other side, this is where I keep all my specialty stuff. So, of course, we have to have our Fluke meter. I usually stick with Fluke. Fluke has, is very reputable in the electrical industry. And this one's good because it uh, reads current. You can check voltage and AC or DC, continuity or ohms. It reads temperature. There's a little temperature probe that you can plug in. You can read temperature, of course, current, frequency. This is good to have for regular troubleshooting. But I just want to mention that I do have other Fluke meters. Um, here's another Fluke amp meter. It has other things like millivolt, um, has the ability to use this flexible amp clamp. This one's cool when you're dealing with big switch gear or bigger wires because let's say you just have a bunch of really thick wires and you can't get this clamp on. You can wrap this clamp, this flexible clamp around and you can read current on really big wires even if they're all bunched together. So that's good to have. As well as if you're dealing with more industrial machinery if you're working on like diodes and just other small low voltage type of things you want to have like a good multimeter these are more accurate when reading like ohms versus just a regular amp clamp so obviously this isn't part of my bag but i just want to mention that i do use other meters than just this amp clamp i like to keep a set of cut resistant gloves so that if i if i'm punching out a hole or something I don't want to cut myself. This is a key hole saw, so if you're going to be cutting out some boxes or making a hole, it's good to have one just in your bag. If you don't want to go grab your power tool, just cut out a quick hole. This is good for residential. I would say I've used this the most where you have like staples or you need to pull things off of wood. It's always good to have something to pry things off, especially if you're like demoing, doing service work. This is an underrated tool. It's called a volt claw. You can either buy just one of these or you can buy them as a set. But whenever you're doing service work or new construction and you're going back to a box that's hot, and let's say you're just trying to like pull the wires and maybe you're just trying to inspect something or just doing something really quick, you can use these hooks to pull on wires that are hot without using metal pliers that will potentially nick it and causing an arc flash in front of your face or causing you to get hurt. These are non-conductive, so you can put a wire in there and just grab it and move it around or you can hook it on there to pull it out of a box you can put the wire in here to turn it um, this is i haven't used this but you can put wire nuts on here and tighten the wire nuts or you can push things into a box let's say you're making up a box and you're really trying to stuff them in the corners and you utilize the full box you can use this to push them in it's such a handy tool these are great from working on a lot of machinery or a lot of electronics. It's good to have these little control screwdrivers for these really, really tiny little screws you might deal with. I like this one right here, this Klein tool. I'm not sure the number, but I'll link it down below. But this is good if you if you need more of like a stubby version, you can flip this around and it can get real small or you can have it a long version. And of course, you can switch it to a flathead if needed. I like to keep two different type of levels with me at all times sometimes you deal with a little small four square box where you can you just need a small level or let's say you have straps that are too close together and this won't fit you can put a little small one on it or actually this one sorry take that back this one's only good for leveling horizontal but you get what i'm saying if you're going to use a four square box you can put this on top and um, i only get levels that have strong rare earth magnets you don't want to be using a level on a lift or installing conduit and let's say you're moving it around, you don't want the level to fall on the ground and hit someone in the head. Um, it's good to have, or even when you're bending conduit on the floor and your level keeps falling off, it's always good to have the ones with rare earth magnets. These are good for new construction. These are just tin snips. A lot of times you'll realize that you have to cut thin pieces of sheet metal and these cut through it like butter. This is called a tapping tool. Let's say you're dealing with the box and you have a, a hole that's, I don't know, 630 seconds big and it starts stripping. So you need to upsize it to 830 seconds. Well, you can use this tapping tool to tap it and use a bigger size. Instead of having to replace the whole box, you can actually just make it one size bigger. It goes from 630 seconds, 830 seconds, 1030 seconds. And then this, I believe it's like a quarter inch. And um, I'm not sure what the other side is. This, this is kind of rusted. I can't really see it too well. This right here, when you're running a lot of conduit, it's good to have this. They, they make a new version where you can put it on an impact, but I like this one because you just keep it in your bag, use it by hand. And what some people don't know about this is 
When you're dealing with EMT set screw couplings and connectors, there's a little tiny, like a flat head screw that's on top. Well, this actually fits perfectly on set screw connectors and couplings. And you can just, you can cut ream a conduit and then use this to actually tighten the connector. So that's cool that it's included in one tool. This is for my impact. If I'm trying to make a hole that's really far in there, I like to just keep this on hand. Right here, we have Allen keys. These are for panels when you're dealing with, I don't know, maybe some VFDs, something that has bigger Allen keys, you could use this. If I'm dealing with smaller type of screws, I can use these. I have metric and I have standard. If you do a lot of commercial new construction work and you use MC, it's good to have an MC cutter in your bag just so you can strip it real easy and you can keep it on you at all times. I usually keep two magnetic stud finders, mainly because sometimes when I'm using these on the wall, I have forgotten them on the wall and I left them on job sites. So I just keep more than one because you'll, you'll realize when you're missing this, man, it's like pain. This is a tool that you always wanna have in your tool bag, especially if you're doing service work. You gotta keep two stubbies with you. They have small ratcheting ones, but I like the non-ratcheting ones. I have a Phillips and a flathead to get into those tight spots. Also, this is a good tool to have after you install all your receptacles, you wanna make sure that you use a meter to check that you have 120, as well as making sure that the wiring is correct. And these are real easy just to plug in, just to verify. And then if you have things that are on a GFCI or that are GFCI protected, you can plug this in, hit this button to make sure that it's gonna trip during a fault. Now, if you're getting it inspected, the inspectors are more than likely gonna be testing all your GFCI stuff. So you wanna make sure that you test it and make sure it works before you call the inspection. So you might be looking at this and be thinking, man, that's a lot of tools to have at one time. I'm kind of extra like that. I like having everything with me at all times. I even keep like my pen tester, marker, pen, my knife in my pockets at all times. So of course I like to have everything. Now, first I wanna say thank you to Vito Pro Pack for sending this to me. I'm not promoting this because they're paying me or anything. They did send me this product for free, but I'm promoting it because I show you things that I actually use in the field. So if that bag that I just showed you was too big, you have the Vito Pro Pack Tech MCT. This is the blackout version. Notice how it's all black, but this is the black build out version. Now they have two types of these bags. See, they have the blackout edition and then they have the blackout build out edition. So what that means, is let me open this up and show you. So these these have a little indicator that says V-swap. So this is part of the build out edition. Let me rewind a bit. So when you buy the if you buy the blackout version, it's gonna come with these panels already installed. I'm not sure if it's exactly these ones, but it's gonna come with two panels pre-installed. If you get the build out, you're pretty much paying for the shell first, and then you get to pick whatever panels you want. I believe uh, in total there's four and I have all four. I'm gonna show you right now, but you get to customize each side as you like. So there's a little Velcro right here that you can pull off and you pull these two little hooks and that pulls out one of the panels. And I have two more panels over here that you can install. So all you gotta do is just put it in here and pull the Velcro down and you already swap the panel. So if you wanted to, you could potentially buy all four panels and keep them in your van or your work truck and you can have all your tools already inside of all of them. And if you're going on a specific job, let's say new construction versus service work, you can pull a panel off, put the new one in and you have all your, your tools that you use for service versus new construction. So this really gives you more customization with all your tools and it can help you be more efficient and more organized in the field. So, and remember both sides can do this. So same thing, you just pull it out and you could just put a new one in and it's that easy. So for example, let's say, let's say you're using this as a service bag, right? and you wanted some troubleshooting stuff, well, on one side, you can keep your meter, you can keep, you can find, you can put your tracer on this side and maybe all your troubleshooting gear, right? And on the other side, let's say you just wanted, just wanted to keep like a drill and maybe some small M12 tools where you can just put them in there and you'll have like a little service bag. So you can really use it however you want. Another thing I wanna note is one of these, I believe it's this one, 
has an iPad holder. So let's say you're gonna be giving quotes or collecting payment or something on a job, you can actually keep your iPad directly in your bag and you don't have to carry it all the time. You could just carry it in one bag. So I did wanna tell you about the Vito Pro Pack warranty. So they have a five year zero downtime warranty, which means that if something ever messes up on your bag and you send it in for warranty, they'll actually send you a loaner bag so that you're not down a bag during the field. Let's say you work the whole week, well, you need a bag, right? Or they're gonna send you a loaner bag and make sure that you're all taken care of while yours is getting worked on. You can register your veto to activate your five-year warranty. Uh, for every veto you get, you can actually redeem a free bottle wrench. You just have to submit all the stuff online. But I just wanna let you guys know that if you ever have an issue, you're paying for quality when you buy a veto. Also on my XL, my strap actually messed up at one point and I submitted a claim and they sent me one free of charge, no questions asked. I mean, I just had to send a picture, had to provide my receipt and they sent it to me, so. And before this video ends, I'll load this up so you can see what it looks like if you were to load it up with a bunch of your tools. If there's any questions that you have on some of these tools or any, if you need any recommendations, go ahead and leave a comment and I can try to get back to you. All these tools will be linked in the description to make it easier so you don't have to go and look up each one one by one. So if you wanna see what I do on a day-to-day -day basis, if you wanna see more frequent videos, make sure you follow my TikTok and Instagram. I post every week, almost every day, on stuff that I deal with every day in the field and the tools that I'm using. The handle is at sparky underscore izzy. Of course, I'll link it down below as well. And let me know down in the comments what your favorite tool is that you keep in your bag or some things that you use that I don't use. If you found this video helpful, make sure you like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell for more content like this. Sparky Izzy, peace.